Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Electronics Maddy. In this video, I am going to demonstrate design and simulation of a forward converter in vSIM. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to it. Only then you will get the videos that we post regularly. Alright, let's get started. So this is the circuit diagram of a forward converter. So it is basically a DC to DC converter which provides electrical isolation by the use of transformer. You can increase the voltage at the output end or decrease it uh, based on buck and boost mode of operation by suitably selecting the turns ratio. The de detailed working of a forward converter is explained in one of our previous videos. In case you would like to watch it, watch it. Uh, the link will be provided in the description and it will also be available in the end screen. So uh, in this video, I'm going to go through the design and the simulation aspect. So the design starts up with certain assumptions. So these are the assumptions that we are going to have. So these are basically the requirements, your load requirements or the type of circuit that you want will largely be decided by the application that you use. So I'm assuming uh, it for an output voltage of 12.8 8 volt and supply voltage is 48 volt so I am basically reducing the output voltage buck mode of operation is performed the resistance value chosen is 10 ohm the switching frequency is 35 kilohertz delta ILX and delta ILM depends on the amount of current that you want through to flow through this circuit so I have assumed it to be a suitable value in this case the turns ratio I have taken it as 1.5 so now our first step is to determine the duty ratio how do we do that n2 by n1 is equal to v out by vs into d substituting the value and assuming turns ratio of 1.5 according to our design details so we will be finding the value of duty ratio which is 40 percent once we have found this our next step is to determine the capacitance value so capacitance value delta v out by v out is equal to 1 minus d into 8 lx cf square so lx will be found in our next step but uh, i have directly included here so solving you will be getting 100 microfarad and it is designed for a ripple of 0.153 percent so you can decide amount of ripple that you want at the output voltage and based on that you can design it so now i'll be determining the value of lx and lm so whatever value i get lx over here that is substituted in the previous equation so delta lm is equal to vs into d by lm into f substituting and solving you'll be getting lm to be equal to 5 milli henry and lx is equal to v out into 1 minus d whole divided by delta ilx into f so substituting the values you'll be getting lx to be equal to 0.4 milli henry so these are the values that we are going to enter in psim one of the most important uh, steps is with respect to the gating block in psim how is it different we have the duty ratio and percentage we have to enter them in degree uh, which is used to trigger the switches so how do we do that so 100% duty cycle corresponds to 360 degrees isn't it so what does 40% duty cycle correspond to 40 into 360 divided by 100 if you do that you will be getting 144 degrees so 144 degrees should be entered in the gating block in order to trigger the switch so this is how we will be analyzing the design procedure once you have a clear vision of uh, how to design the circuit we will get into our psim and uh, start our sim all right here we are so over here we have that feature of uh, having the components that we want uh, so for, at the first place i will be requiring a dc voltage source i would also be requiring a mosfet switch i'm placing in this particular position and uh, go to elements go to power and go to transformers and choose single phase uh, we don't want an inverted one so choose the one which is not inverted inverted will be used for a flyback converter so choose single phase transformer and the winding term uh, polarity should be in this particular fashion so uh, connect it uh, with respect to the transformer primary in this particular fashion and once this is done uh, we will be enclosing the circuit uh, we need a gating block in order to trigger the switch so this is connected in this particular fashion once this is done um, we will be requiring two diodes one in this particular direction rotate it another in this particular direction and uh, we also need an inductor so inductor is here you can place it in this particular position we need a capacitor and uh, place it in this particular position we also need a resistor so so rotating can be done by right clicking on the mouse. Uh, so I'll be connecting uh, the circuit according to a circuit diagram. Um, and it is connected to a resistive load in this particular fashion. And once that is done, a diode is connected in this particular position. Uh, just to ensure during the second uh, half, that is when uh, during turn off cycle of the switch, it conducts in this particular fashion. So once all of these are done, now our step is to, important step is to enter the parameters. So we are designing it for a supply voltage of 48 volt. So enter that. And uh, the switching frequency according to our design is 35 kilohertz. Choose that. The switching point is 144 degrees this is what we have designed it for this is the step that i was discussing um, in the slides so once that is done there are a lot of uh, parameters that needs to be changed slight changes with respect to these parameters uh, so these can be assumed suitably based on your requirement so 
i am taking it to be equal to 10 micro and uh, 10 micro here lm we have already designed according to our circuit so its value is equal to 5 milli henry uh, the turns ratio is 1.5 is to 1 so i have uh, kept according to the design procedure so these four values should be uh, assumed suitably so you don't have a lot of difference with respect to the output by changing these but uh, lm plays a very important role and the turns ratio also plays a very important role so be very careful with these three parameters and we have gone this uh, we have gone with the values with respect to our design so once this is done we need a voltage probe in order to measure the voltage at the supply terminals and at the load terminals as well so we'll be connecting it uh, in this particular fashion over here and uh, with respect to the load we'll be connecting at the resistor in order to see the output once all of these are done, uh, so our next important step is to induct, uh, enter the value of inductance value. Uh, the inductance value that uh, LX value is chosen has to be equal to 0.4 milli, so enter that. The capacitance value that we have chosen is 100 micro according to our design, so enter that as well. Um, next step is to enter the resistance value and it is equal to 10 ohm in our design. So once that is done, we have entered all the parameters. We need one of the most important blocks that is simulation control. So the name itself gives you a clear picture, simulation control. It is used in order to control the entire simulation runtime and the total time step that is required. So let us say this is uh, set to be equal to 0.1 seconds just to overcome the transient. Let, let us click on the close window. Now let us click on run simulation. The time step will automatically change based on your circuit parameters so no need to worry about it click on ok and uh, see the parameters that you want that is the supply voltage and the load voltage so in case you want to see the currents as well in the circuit you can check by connecting current probes in series with the circuit based on your requirements as well so this is the output voltage uh, and the supply voltage waveforms so i'll be zooming in the portion over here so you are getting approximately equal to 12.3 volts this is basically the output voltage so we are not getting 12.8 but we are getting approximately closer to it because these are although pcm has ideal components the transformer that we have chosen is a practical transformer so there will be drops across these resistive components L rp rs lp ls so as a result you're not getting the exact output voltage but you're getting closer to it 12.3 is still fine and it's a very good output with respect to the design circuit is concerned so this is how we'll be simulating a forward converter in pcm i hope uh, you have understood it so in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below you can also reach out to me at electronicsmedia.gmail.com if you like this video please do like it share it and subscribe to our channel for regular updates thanks for watching this video please do keep supporting thank you